A couple videos back, we bumped into some syntax where I showed you we could say assembly and then apply an attribute directly to the assembly. And again, uh, go watch the assemblies playlist if you need to, assemblies and packages and deployment and all that kind of stuff. But basically, for all intents and purposes in these videos, an assembly is a DLL or EXE. That's not perfectly true, but good enough for what we're doing here. Uh, anyway, we can attach a s an attribute to an assembly using the special syntax. And if you create a new project in Visual Studio, generally it will uh, give you this assembly info.cs file. And if you scroll around here, you'll see that there are several attributes you can apply to an assembly, and they're pretty straightforward. But you could give your assembly a title. You know, this this one's called Scratch WinForm, but I could say my special assembly and now that's my assembly title what's it good for nothing unless somebody uses reflection and pulls it out and then I could give my assembly a description like this is my awesome code I hope you paid me lots lost of money lots of money for okay and again that just sits there and if somebody wants to look that up inside my assembly they certainly can here's the copyright trademark culture is Kind of important, but we'll get to that in, a, in the assembly videos. Com visible. Oh, I didn't even want to talk about com. Here's a GUID to try to uniquely identify my assembly. I could. Now, you're not required to add any of these attributes. They're just there because Visual Studio is being nice and made this separate assembly info.cs file where we generally put all these. This is just a normal code file like any other other code file. I could put code here, but it would have to be at the bottom for all these attributes to maintain their specialness. And then of keen importance is the assembly version attribute. Uh, if you don't give a version, I think it defaults to one anyway, but in the assemblies videos playlist we'll talk about versioning and uh, what these numbers mean and how you could use them to your advantage. I mean, assembly versioning your assemblies is good, especially as you release more and more to your your uh, user base. The assembly file version actually isn't that important, but I just kind of want to point out that being able to apply uh, attributes to an assembly is useful, okay, especially in this scenario. This is 99.999% of the time this is the scenario where you will apply attributes to your assembly.